All right, so this is a quick tutorial on Prisma, many-to-many -many relationships. And we're going to be looking at both implicit and explicit relations. Um, we're going to be using the documentation here. It's, it's a pretty good follow along, but it, there's still some things that kind of are good to point out and uh, showing how Prisma um, syntax works and like how you can think about Prisma syntax in a way that will help you to remember how to work with the client. <clears throat> so uh, first is the implicit relations, which is sort of the, the uh, magic wand for Prisma uh, in defining many to many relationships. And it's a cool tool, um, but it only addresses simple use cases for many to many relationships. And uh, we'll show you why here in just a second. But if you can use them, they're great, right? So uh, an example of an implicit many to many relationship here would be like between a post and maybe uh, any number of tags that that post can have, right? Um, and of course, tags can be reused across other posts. So there's a many to many uh, type of relationship here. Uh, the schema looks like such, right? But the thing I want you to notice is here we're defining tags for the post model. And this is of a type of tag array. It's an array of tags that's going to come back here, right? And then what we're not defining here uh, in this implicit many to many relationship is the actual join table, right? Or the relation table between these two. That's not even defined as a model, which means you can't modify that join table, right? Um, so uh, advantage of implicit many to many um, is that you get some um, simplified uh, syntax for getting at uh, the posts and the relational tags or tags and the relational posts, uh, but it means you cannot modify the join between them. So if there was maybe a third category on that join table where you had, you know, the date that that association was created, there's no way to retrieve that date relationship here because you can't define it, right? So it's strictly the relationship between the fact that you can have <clears throat> many tags on a post um, and the post can have uh, many tags, right? All right, so uh, to create the post, it would look something like this. This is strictly the post related data, right? And then we are going to, um, uh, while we create the post or as we create the post, we're also going to create the relationship to tags and actually create the tags themselves. So this is sort of that nice syntactical sugar that we get here with implicit many to many relationships is we can not only in one transaction um, create the relationship to the tags, but if the tags don't exist, we can actually create the tags themselves. And that's kind of what we're doing here. We're saying, hey, tags, right, <clears throat> on the post object, uh, we are going to create, right? And, and here in this case, uh, by creating, we are literally creating the tags and the relationship at the same time. Now, obviously, the create here has to be an array uh, because remember, we are creating an array of tag associations here. So here within the array, we're going to specify not just one, but two tags in this case, right? And the tag is a pretty simple object. It just has a name that it's looking for. Right? Here's we specify the name. And what this create option or operation will do is create the post. It'll create the association of tags and the tags themselves, right? So all of that and just these few lines, it's really nice. Uh, querying is kind of the same thing too. Um, we are going to be able to query the post and all we need to do is specify, hey, also include the tags, these relational, relational tags right here, right? And this is gonna be a, a, what we call a flat object in that the UI doesn't actually know that there's a join table between these two models, right? All it sees is that, hey, I've got an array of tags coming back on this post item. And that looks flat, if you will, to the UI, which is usually how the UI expects data to come through. Um, and then the response, just like I said, so here's your post level data. And then on the same level, it's flat, are the, the array of tags, right? And then associated data within each tag. So uh, this is really nice, really short and sweet syntax with implicit many to many relationships. Unfortunately, it doesn't address uh, anything complex at the moment, right? And then maybe they'll expand this in the future, but for right now, uh, the join table itself, you can't even specify uh, what the structure of that table looks like. Um, you can't manipulate anything within the schema itself on um, that table either. So if you need to do that, then you've got to use um, something called explicit um, many-to-many relationships. Um, here we are actually defining the join table, right? So still using posts and tags, um, but here we're defining um, a, a, another attribute here, which is the ID in this case not very useful, <laughs> but this could be something useful, right? This could be, again, pointing to like a date that this relationship or association was, was created. Um, and so here, uh, it's pretty simple. We're going to define within this join table that, of course, we're joining posts and their associated tags. And we see the relation here is defined by 
the post ID, which we are creating down here, and the tag, the relation is created by the tag ID, which we see right here, right? And um, this is how Prisma Schema creates the join or the relation between these two other models, okay? Um, so you have to define this with explicit many-to-many -many relationships. It's not given to you. Um, the other thing is too, uh, as we go to create or we go to query, the syntax gets a little bit more complicated, right? So in this case, same exact thing as we were trying to do above, we want to create a post. And then we also want to create both the association of tags and the tags themselves as we create the post, right? So notice in this case, we still have tags and we still have create and we still have an array, right? An array of tags that we are addressing here, but we have to specify now this tag right, then colon, then create, then the data and going into that tag. So here's a double create that we're, we're having to do here. Now, at first, this doesn't really make a lot of sense. Why is there like, you know, two nested creates here? But when you think about what we're actually defining here, it does make sense, right? Um, and then this is what's abstracted away for us um, in implicit many to many relationships, but it is actually what's happening. So we look at what we're, what we're creating here. Yes, we're creating in a post, but then if you look here, we're not, we're not saying that tags is returning an array of tags. No, in this case, it's actually returning an array of post tags, right? And post tags is just a relation, right? And so if we want to get at the tag within the array of post tags, it's going to be nested. So that's why the syntax here has changed just a little bit. So as we go to create or our association of tags, we're creating them still an array, but now remember we are technically here. This is an array of post tags, not tags, post tags, not tags. Now, if you wanted to call this post tags, I guess you could make it more explicit, but it's going to ultimately look like an array of tags. And I'm going to show you how we do that. So tags create, remember this is really post tags. And what do we want to create within post tags? Well, we really want to create a tag. So that's why we specify tag here. Right. And then we're going to create that tag and here's its name. Right. And then we pass in another tag. And that's why the syntax looks like this with the, the double nested creates. Right. Uh, same thing for query. Right. Whereas we're querying the post and we want to return their tags, we have to include an extra include because remember, this is technically nested. So if we are querying the tags on the post, we are technically querying the array of post tags, not tags. So we have to say, okay, include the tags, which are really post tags, and then also include the tag within the post tags, because this is ultimately what we're trying to get at here, the actual tag. And you'll see that reflected right down here. So include what? The tags, plural, which is really post tags. And within the post tags, please include the tag. That's why this double nested or extra include is here. And that actually makes more sense now. The output will look exactly like the output, uh, save one thing, as what we had before. And that is that we have a flattened structure, right? So we have our post information and we have our tags information on the top level. But notice, well, something a little different here. What is this that we're returning? Well, this is technically the post tags relation, right? Here's the ID. Here's the post ID, here's the tag ID, and here's the tag that we told it to include, but it's now like nested in one, another layer deep. So it's a tag within a tag, right? And this is generally not the structure that we want to return to the UI. Uh, we'd rather see tags and then this information, right? Or this, this information, like an array of these objects is what we'd rather see. Uh, this is not su super useful, this is not super useful. And in this case, this is actually not useful at all, okay? So what do we do? Well, we need to map, right? So we're mapping the results back to the UI to make it look more like what we saw up here, uh, where we have tags, an array of tags, and then we just simply return the tag information as each object within that array, right? So how do we get it to look like this? Uh, we're just gonna do a quick map. So on the query of the post, yes, we're going to include the post tags array and then tag within the post tags array, all good. Now, as we map that array, that query that we made, right? We're gonna map the post and we're gonna spread the post information because we're not really concerned about that. That's gonna remain unchanged. But for tags, what we want to return here is a flattened object, right? We just want to return this, not 
all of this. So here we're going to map the tags array and just return tag.tag .tag in this case, right? So get at not just the tag, but the tag within the tag. This is what we want to return, okay? And so that is exactly what we would expect here. This is what the return object will look like now. This is now perfectly flattened, exactly what the UI might be expecting to get back uh, and easy for the UI to sort of traverse, right? All right, so hopefully this helps us to understand um, implicit versus explicit explicit many-to-many -many relations within Prisma. Um, next, what we're going to do is cover um, getting at like this tertiary information. Um, perhaps this would be useful. Maybe this is a date. Maybe this is something else. Um, obviously, we can just return this, but the UI has to know how to uh, traverse that and what to do with that, right? So we want to get a little bit more fancy with that in the next tutorial.